this warm-up we're going to use as notes. So it says match the equation to the property of operations that is displayed. I want you to write down the property and then an example of it. So you are going to have the answers provided to you, but I want you to write them down in the form of notes. So the associative property of addition, that means that we are looking for an addition problem, not a subtraction or a multiplication problem. And the associative property groups different pieces together. So this one right here would be the associative property. So you'll write down the property and then the example of that. You can see they've grouped the 7x with the 3, and then over here they grouped the 3 with the 5. The associative property of multiplication is similar, but for multiplication. So in this one you see they grouped the 2 and the x together, and in this side they grouped the 3 and the 2 together. The commutative property of addition. Commutative tells us the order doesn't matter. So you can see here they swapped the 3x and the y to change the order. Commutative property of multiplication. They have the 3x plus 1 multiplied by 5, and then instead they have 5 multiplied by 3x plus 1. So that one goes here. And the distributive property, that's the one where we multiply it in with both pieces. So 4 times 2x and 4 times 9 with the subtraction in the middle. Again, you are writing these as notes. How can we determine if these expressions are equivalent to each other? We can start by simplifying both expressions. We combine what's called like terms, so the variables can get combined. 2x and negative 3x would give us a negative x. Then we can combine our number pieces together. 3 and 1 make 4. And all of that is over negative 6. Up here, combining our variable terms together, I have 4x and negative 3x would give me a positive x. And then there's a negative 4. And on the bottom, 4 plus 2 is 6. So far, they don't match up perfectly. I see a negative 6 and a positive 6 down here, a negative x and a positive x, a positive 4 and a negative 4. But we know with fractions that we can multiply the same number in the top and in the bottom and get an equivalent value. Well, negative 1 times x, negative x would give me a positive x. Negative 1 times positive 4 would give me a negative 4. And negative 1 times negative 6 would give me a positive 6. So these are equivalent. Probably should have used the dot for multiplication instead of the x so it didn't look like another variable there. But they are equivalent to each other. Another way that we could determine if they are equivalent is by replacing the variable with a number. So for example, if I put 0 in the x position, 2 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 3 is 3, minus 0 is 3, plus 1 is 4, so this would be 4 over negative 6. Over here, 4 times 0 is 0, and negative 3 times 0 is 0. 4 plus 2 is 6. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Minus 0 is negative 4. So I have 4 over negative 6 and negative 4 over positive 6. We know that when we divide with op opposite signs that our answer comes out negative. So this is negative 4 sixths and this one is also negative 4 sixths. So they are equivalent. For 1 through 9, determine whether the expressions are equivalent. 
If they are equivalent, state the property of operations or reasoning that justifies why the two expressions are equivalent. If they are not, choose a number for the variable. Then using that number, evaluate each expression to justify your answer. Well, I see that 10 and negative 10 make zero. So then we're left with three X. So they are equivalent in number one. And that is because 10 and negative 10 are additive inverses. Here, if I rearrange and put the x in the front, these would be equivalent as well. This would say x plus 3y plus z. So these are equivalent, and the one that tells us we can change the order is the commutative property. The commutative property applies to addition and multiplication, so you can be even more specific by saying they are equivalent by the commutative property of addition. If I combine the x pieces, 1x plus 4 more x's is 5x. 5x plus 3 is not the same as 8x. This would have to have a variable with it in order for it to add up to 8x. But these two tiles are different pieces. So these are not equivalent. Oops. And we're going to use a number to stick in there and show why. If we put a 2 in the x position. This would be 8 times 2, which is 16. And this would be 3 plus 2 plus 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. And our example was when we used x equals 2. Number four, this one we use the distributive property. Three times x is three x, and three times two is six. So yes, they are equivalent by the distributive property. In number five, you can see that they've grouped together 3x and negative z, and then they just scoot those parentheses over. So this is the associative property. So yes, these are equivalent by the associative property. For number six, if we add 3x and 2x together, those are like terms. 3 plus 2 is 5. We can't combine variables with regular numbers, so we can stop there, but they are equivalent. And what we did is we added like terms. Or you could say combining like terms. If we use the distributive property on this one, it would say 2x minus 4. So these are not equivalent. And let's use a number as an example.
about three. Well, three minus two is one, and two times one equals two. But in the other one, we would have two times three minus two, and two times three is six. Six minus two is equal to four, so two is not equal to four. In this one, we would use the distributive property to check as well. 5 times 4x would be 20x, because 5 times 4 is 20, and we have that x in there. And then 5 times 1 is 5, plus this 3x at the end. Then we would combine our like terms, 20x and 3x add together to get 23x plus 5. And we could rearrange them putting the 5 out front and the 23x at the end. So this is a multiple step explanation, but it does end up that they are equivalent. The first thing that we did was the distributive property. That was in this step here. Then we used combining like terms. And then to change the order, we use the commutative property. For this one, let's check by using the distributive property. Four times x would be four x. 4 times 9 is 36. I also have a 10 here and a negative 10 here. These are additive inverses, so they add up to 0. And then we're left with 4x plus 36, which is equivalent. So yes, these are equivalent. First we did the distributive property. And then we used additive inverses. Logan said that 2 times x plus 4 must be equivalent to 5x plus 8 because he tested 0 and it worked. Is Logan correct? Explain your reasoning. He is incorrect. We don't test if expressions are equivalent using numbers. Because if you were to check a different number, like 2, for example, replace the x with a 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. And 6 times 2 would give him 12. But if he plugs it into this one, replace the x with a 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And 10 plus 8 is 18. So 12 is not equal to 18. We could also use the distributive property instead of trying to check a number, because we can't check every number possible, we would use some algebra. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 4 is 8. 2x plus 8 is not the same as 5x plus 8, so these are not equivalent. 11. Lily says that 12x divided by... Lily says that 12x divided by 12... I'm missing the piece here, equals 12. But Maya says that's not always true. Who is correct? Explain your reasoning. So, 
in the case where 12x divided by 12, she says that's not always true. Who is correct? Let's check a number to see if that would help. How about 12 times 3 over 12? If x was 3, would this work? Well, 12 times 3 is 36. And 36 divided by 12 would be 3. So it didn't equal 12 that time. So who is correct? Maya is correct. And we can show using some algebra 12x divided by 12. Well, 12 divided by 12 would just be 1, so this is the same as a single x. Think of this as like two truths and a lie. You're going to create two expressions that are equivalent to one another and one expression that is not equivalent to the others. So these expressions should include a term with a variable and a term with a number. What I mean by a term is like a chunk of the expression. So for example, 12x would be a variable term plus 5, that would be the number term. So an equivalent expression to that might look something like this. 2 plus 8x plus 3 plus 4x. Because 2 plus 3 would give us that term with 5. And 8x plus 4x would give us 12x's. So those are the two truths. And then the lie could say something like, Because if we use the distributive property here, that would be 12x, but 12 times 5 would give us 60. So the variable term would match, but the number term will not. So these are my truths, and this one is my lie. There are a bunch of different expressions that you could create. That would work for this problem. It does not have to match mine, but you need two that match to each other and one that is not equivalent to those. Your warm up again was those notes. Please make sure they are written in your composition book, and then you're good to go.